28, Kevin Harvick in the 29. How about the guy running right with them, Mark Martin in the 6? It wasn't 30 laps ago. He was on pit road with the hood up. And he, now he's running third, and those three are about to break away from the rest of the pack. It's fair to say that Mark Martin had his most enjoyable season in Cup last year, making the chase for the next Delft Cup, the final 10 races, and having a blast doing it. Got one more try as Brian Vickers' car is rolled back to the garage. We're just past halfway. Rebecca is a most particular restaurateur. She demands quality. Johnson going uh, into the infield. Let's go upstairs. Uh, Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, and Darrell Walsh. Coming off turn two. Jimmy Johnson leading the race. There's Kevin Harvick, who is tucked up tight behind Jimmy Johnson. The two made contact. Johnson went around. Mark Martin went to the outside wall. There is Rusty Wallace. Crash to the infield, as is Joe Nemechek. Things got too close in turn two. Yeah, uh, uh, there's, there's this bump drafting thing that's going around, and it's gotten out of hand. Uh, you know, bump drafting down here, you do down a straightaway, on a, in a straight line. And it seems like everybody's got the, uh, got the idea you can do it just anywhere you want to. It's laid into him right there and just gets him loose. Mark has nowhere to go. Everybody starts checking up a little bit, and hello. Uh, boy, I, Jeff Burton, the yes. 31, and Tony Stewart, the 20, just makes it through, as well as Bobby Labonte in the 18. 48 car to the garage. And that will mean that Jimmy Johnson will have to trot out a backup car and start at the back of the 500 with a lot of these drivers here. Whoa, Rusty! Another wild backstretch ride at Daytona for Rusty Wallace. You know, you said that about Johnson's car. It didn't look hurt. Uh, when I saw it, uh, okay. let's see if he hits anything, because I think he may just spin it down into the infield. Might have a little cosmetic to that left rear, but I don't think he ever hits anything. You're right, Daryl. So uh, that will remain their primary car if there's no... Uh, I don't even think it's damage got Damage that's not visible. Right. But wow. That thing, the roof flaps came up, kept it on the ground. You saw the rear tires hopping up and down, but the rest of these guys were not so lucky. And those acres of pavement back there coming off turn two to the inside help keep it on the ground how many times in his career has rusty been in the air on the back stretch here some guys that, some guys daytona is just not good to them <laughs> let's ride with kevin harvick and listen what happens mike is you get a run on a guy you get a good run on him and you know you can't lift and you're hoping by the time you get to him that over there you're on you're off the corner. Listen to that thing crash. Dick Bergeron. Johnson, what happened out there? The same same stuff from last year. Um, I don't know, from the start of the race, Harvick tried giving me a flat on the, the initial start. And then we're out there riding along and, and he pulls his head off of his shoulders and tries bump drafting in the center of the turn. I guess all those years of you know, watching TV and worshiping racing like he says he did. He didn't watch much of it, realize you're not supposed to bump draft in the middle of the turn. It's a shame. I mean, just tore up six or seven good race cars. I hope, I hope that uh, Childress either fires, fires them, does something about them, NASCAR does something about them, because this is ridiculous. Thanks, Absolutely Jim. ridiculous. Thank you, Jimmy. Obviously, very upset, and, and, and rightfully so. But the good news for Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knaus, as you pointed out, Daryl, is that car looks relatively undamaged. Now, Johnson, if he can use this car, will start on the front row of the 500. There's no incentive for him to finish this 150. When you're back here, like I said, you're getting a run, you're getting a run, you're getting a suck off of that car, and you want to get on, you hope that you time this just right to where you come out from behind him and don't touch him. It's a lot like trying to run through a stoplight. You're coming to it, it's yellow, it's yellow. Am I gonna make it, am I gonna make it? And it turns red before you get through it. Poor Mark Martin on the outside. Jeff Burton had the inside, so did the 20 of Tony Stewart. Those were the right ways to go. Mark got trapped on the outside, Rusty got turned around, and Harvick will not race that car on Sunday. I don't think he'll ever race that one again. I mean, this obviously tore up a lot of equipment, but what this did do for people like 
Robbie Gordon Martin Truex, it puts them back with the lead pack since we did have a caution with that. And as the pace car brought the field around, everyone except for Jeff Burton and Scott Wimmer made four tire pit stops. Saw Jeremy, Jeremy Mayfield on pit road. He won the second practice here yesterday and told me last night he has a car capable of being at the front. There's Wimmer in the 22, the cat car right behind Jeff Burton lined up behind the pace car. Right now, the racing cars are Martin Truex in the one, and Eric McClure was posted uh, next to the 73. Now, that'll cycle around now uh, after those pit stops. Dick Burton. With Mark Martin, what happened? Jimmy spun out, but uh, he said he had help, so uh, they had a wreck. Uh, I could win the Daytona 500 with that car. Can you win the Daytona from the five? Can you win the 500 from the back in the backup car? Absolutely not. Never happened. Uh, that car could win, though. Very disappointed, Mark. Have another one like that, though. I'm sorry. Let's go back and look at the start of the race and see what Jimmy Johnson spoke about when he and Kevin Harvick, starting on the front row, had close company at the drop of the green flag. Yeah, apparently there was some bad blood here before we even got to the green flag, or at least when we took the green flag. I think Jimmy's talking about maybe Harvey pulled down on him, or, yeah, right there you see him make contact. Bump. I remember being in a driver's meeting at Talladega one year, and, and some of the younger drivers were hearing the, the, everybody talk about bump drafting. And, and some of the older drivers had to go explain to them that you do it in a straight line, that you don't touch another man's bumper when he's in the turn. You can't hang on to a car when you do that. Well, you saw it, Mike. It only took that one little bump when you're turning at 190 miles per hour, and here's the aftermath. I think that was Dave Blaney that got underneath Rusty Wallace and lifted his car up in the air. Scott Riggs wrecked as well. 